Okay, guys, so yeah, there's just one last thing that we need to uh, do on this project now um, that I couldn't not do really because it needs doing. <laughs> so it's not really to do with animations, it's just when the um, enemy now attacks us, obviously we're not losing any health. You know, we've made it so that we could um, take away health from the enemy, but when it attacks us, the character needs to have, to have some health that is being reduced. Um, so I just thought as part of this, it's not to do with animations, but I'll show you that anyway. Um, so to do this, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to find in here our first person character blueprint. Because, you know, it's dependent on the character, so that's where it needs to be stored. So, um, yeah, first thing we're going to do, we've obviously got all this stuff in here from the, um, you know, the template. We'll ignore that though and find a blank space in our event graph. Um, we are going to create a variable and we're going to call that character health. Okay, there we go. And we don't want it to be a boolean, we want it to be uh, a float. And there we go. So the character has a variable for its health and um, we don't want it to be zero, we want it to be one. Okay, by default, one health or 1.0. So we're going to go to the viewport now and we need some kind of collision detection here. Um, I think I said this before, before, I don't really like using these the capsule ones that come on a template. For some reason I always have problems with them. But So we're going to add a component we're going to call that, oh well, it's going to be a box collision. There we go. And again, size and everything is going to be dependent on what you want. I'm going to make it quite large for testing purposes. There we go. Okay, so we have a collision detection and we have a variable. I'm going to jump over to the event graph. Um, as I said, just find a big space, um, select our collision box, and again, a collision event on begin overlap. There we go, zoom in. So, what is it that's going to take health away from us? It's our zombie. So, we're going to cast to uh, a zombie 2 that I made. There we go. Object to other actor, which will restrict it to only this will cause this effect. Um, and uh, what's going to happen? So, what's going to happen then is it's going to set our character health there we go, to so type in float. This is all similar to when we did the health for the zombie, it's going to be float minus. Um, get our character health, oops, um, <clears throat> how much damage should it do, 0 0.3, that'll do, <laughs> so it will set the character's health to 0 0.3 of whatever its current amount is, uh, then um, what we want is to have a branch, if I can type properly. So this is our sort of if statement, our condition. So our condition is going to be related to a float, less than or equal to, and I'm going to reconnect it to that character health because I'm using the same value, uh, zero. Yeah, so when it's less than or equal to zero, what's going to happen? Now this is where you could, if you had um, like a, a, a screen where you're like, we're dying, or whatever, like a dead screen, <laughs> you would um, create a widget and everything from there. But we haven't got that so now, so I'm just going to do a print string and it's going to say dead. All right, um, and uh, set game to paused so everything will stop. All right, that's fine. What I also want to do, again, this is for testing purposes, you don't have to do this, is after it sets the health, I'm going to do another print string, just so I can see that it is actually reducing the health. Um, connect the character health to that, so it will just show me on the screen what the character's health is uh, when it's being uh, reduced, so that I know it's working. Um, yeah, I think that should be fine for now. Let's just test that. Push play. So here we go. So he's going to approach us, and 
the heck is he? Health is reduced, but see it jump down in like a couple of times and then it kind of stops reducing. So I come away again, comes up to me and paused his pause and everything like that, but it jumped down way too quickly. It didn't just do it in one step, it did it like in like a couple. So we need to sort that out. Um, I think the easiest way to do that is, yeah, we'll just put a delay on this basically. So move that up a bit. So after we cast to the zombie, before it starts taking any health away, I'm going to put a delay in here. Well, delay is going to depend on a lot of things, but let's set it to two seconds first of all. Push compile. Push play again. It comes up to us. Nothing happens at first. And then two seconds later, we get that reduce reduction health. But obviously, it's not really ideal. Um, but at least it doesn't happen like you know, instantly, one after another. Um, so two seconds, we can probably reduce that to one, one second. Okay, let's try that again. And this should work better with the animation itself as well, actually. So it comes up to us and then bam. Try again. Bam. That, well, like when he hits, the actual um, health is reduced. That works a bit better. Okay, but obviously, you know, we could stand there forever and we wouldn't lose health. So let's come back to this again. One last thing. So um, what we can do is, um, so it does a delay, takes the health away. And then, well, what we need to do is connect something to false, but we don't really need to connect any, anything. We can just loop it back around again. So this false is going to come back all the way to here, plug into there, back into cast again. So it will just repeat that process over and over and over instead of just doing it once until it becomes true and then we'll die. So let's try that again. That should be everything. So he can come up to us. Come on. Okay, every one second it's reducing health, but again, that probably was too quick. I mean, it worked. It, the pro <laughs> it works. It's just going to be tweaking dependent on what you kind of need it for. Okay, so generally speaking, if I was just playing and I was shooting with a guy, he can get me, he can hit me, takes damage away. Uh, it's taking it down consistently, actually. You can tell I didn't um, test this before I recorded. Um, I think we're going to need an, an end overlap. Okay, hold on. Going to remove that. Um, if it's false, keep doing it. Because what's happening there is even when we're away from him, that will keep looping around and keep taking away health. So we don't want that. Um, yeah, let me just pause and I'll I'll come up with a solution so you're not just waiting for me to come up with a solution. <laughs> One second. Okay, guys, so you found a solution. It took me way longer than I thought it would. Um, <laughs> it was because of one simple thing in the end. But I'll just go through this. So some things have obviously just changed since um, yeah, as I was going through things before. So I'll, I'll just run over how we're doing this now. <laughs> so um, I'm in the player character here. So what you need to do, uh, you have this um, begin overlap here with our uh, collision detection box, which is here. And it's casting to the, the zombie, okay? So when the zombie hits us, this box, what it's gonna do this time is it's gonna turn on a Boolean, okay? So the Boolean I just set up here. Um, I just called it pain. <laughs> so, and then it turns it on. Okay, so what happens is when we collide with that box, so when the character collides with the zombie, it turns on the Boolean. And I've just done a print string just so I could see that it was working. When we end that overlap, so when we're no longer in that um, area, um, it's going to turn that uh, Boolean off. Okay, so basically, yeah, when we're in the vicinity of the bad guy, 
it will turn the boolean on when we're no longer in it it will turn it off okay and this is the thing that caused me problems we have to set it up as a, as a separate event which is now event tick and event tick what that does is it um, it's checking every frame of the game um, something that's happening so in this instance it's checking on this condition that this boolean that we made is equal to on so when it's on it's going to do our delay which we caused uh, set up earlier and then take health away all the stuff that we set up earlier on I had it 0.01 that's not what we want to set it back to 0.3 again um, you know when it gets to um, zero um, you know do its dead thing that's all the same thing we had before that's all just connected to event tick now which is on this under this condition of the boolean being on and the boolean being turned on and off is to do with the overlap okay so it's a little bit different to what we started doing but all we're doing is it's under a condition of a boolean now um, instead of just you know what it was before okay what well, that means is you know whenever we're in that area it will just consistently take damage so let's just test it <laughs> fingers crossed this actually works now so if we approach him he comes to us and you see it says true the boolean's come on and the damage is reducing you can see that now it's damaging consistently until we get to zero and then we're dead okay so that's happening let's just check that we can escape the area and it'll stop doing damage so he approaches us it goes true start taking damage now let's run away see so it goes false and now i'm no longer taking damage anymore i'm in a safe area um, and yeah okay so that's it really um <laughs> it was a bit awkward in the end but we got there um that's a zombie sorry so there's our it's all in the first person character a um, couple of variables character health and this sort of pain area you can call that whatever you want um, so hopefully that makes some sense and hopefully that all works out for you